Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another Deep Wreck Diving podcast. I've got a load of stuff I want to talk to you about today. The main thing I'm going to cover is the subject of oxygen toxicity. I've been asked it several times on my videos, how I manage it, you know, what I do in terms of settings, all that kind of stuff. So, so that's going to be the bulk of today's video. Before I do that, though, um, I've got some, uh, some, some kind of all sorts of different news. The first bit of news is I'm getting together with uh, Akim from Inner Space Explorers this evening. We're going to pick up on a load of the questions that got asked on our live stream and something I think I'm really excited about, I hope you are, is we're going to arrange uh, another date for another live stream. So um, I think that'll be really good. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, what else? Um, I've been out diving this weekend and uh, it was absolutely wonderful. We had three great days and for me personally, I had a particularly special day. Um, I found something, it's, it's really important. Uh, unfortunately, I can't tell you about it yet, but um, I'm going through all the, the processes that you've got to follow when you find something like that. So in due course, uh, I guarantee you that you'll find all about, all, find out all about it but I just can't tell you uh, right now, I'm afraid. So sorry sorry to be a bit of a tease on, on that one. The uh, Another thing I guess I did was I released a, a video on Sunday. It's uh, about HMS Stockforce, which is a, a really interesting Q-ship. Um, loads, of, loads of interesting things about it. First of all, it's a great dive. It's really close to Plymouth. It's um, 60 meters, so you know that kind of mod two range, which makes it quite nice. Um, you don't have to go out miles to, to get on it. But the story about it is really, really fascinating. So it was a Q-ship, so it was disguised. Um, tried to get German submarines to come in close and then open fire on them. Um, so the sinking of it uh, is really interesting. The captain of the stock force won the Victoria Cross, which is the highest medal for gallantry in the UK. And they made a film about it in the 1920s, starring, in fact, many of the crew, including the captain. So, uh, and I've got some footage of that in my video. So uh, that was a video that came out on Sunday. If I'm honest, I'm, I'm a bit surprised. I actually thought it was a really good video and it hasn't quite got the traction that I thought it might. So um, anyway, if you haven't seen it, um, please go along and, and have a look at it. If you have seen it and there's something about it you don't think is particularly good, I'd, I'd really appreciate the feedback um, because obviously what I want to do is, is make good videos and I want everybody to see them and for some reason that one hasn't done as well as I thought it would have done. So um, if you go and watch it and you think it's absolutely brilliant, um, then that's great. Please tell me about that. And as always with, uh, with, with any video on YouTube, if you like it and you want to support the person who made it, then it's really important for Google that you you hit the like button, you hit the subscribe button, you write a comment, you share it with people. Anything like that just makes it makes a massive difference to somebody like me running a, a small YouTube channel. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll be really interested in feedback. So uh, please uh, do that. The other thing I want to highlight, and, and I guess it's kind of counter to what I've just said. So um, I've been doing this channel really about seven months and one of the things I've just gone through is a million views on my videos which is just a, a mind-boggling number when you think about it so um, that's 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 a really nice statistic uh, I kind of hoped that was going to hit 10,000 subscribers at about the same time I haven't quite got there yet but obviously uh, you know hopefully I will pretty soon so um, yeah a mi one million views mind-boggling and my my daughter, she's 15 years old. It was her birthday at the weekend, and uh, I've done loads of different things with my life. But the thing <laughs> that has impressed her more than anything else is is having a YouTube channel and having a YouTube channel that's obviously uh, you know had you know that kind of level of, of interest. So um, yeah, help me help, help me impress my daughter. Help me get to 10,000 subscribers. Help me get to two million views, whatever else it is. So um, so thank you. Uh, I guess the other thing to talk about is uh, the, the media <laughs> interest. So um, obviously in January, one of my videos was about me buying the shipwreck of the Armand Branch that is uh, a local shipwreck, 50 odd meters, sunk in the First World War, put a video up online. Video did, did quite well. And uh, about a week, a week and a half ago, it got picked up by the media. It was in most of the British newspapers 
and it's just gone absolutely crazy since then. So I've had all sorts of people getting in touch with me um, in terms of wanting to do interviews or wanting to ask me questions or, or all those kind of things. So uh, absolutely crazy. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it's one of the least interesting things I've done in diving, but it is something that appears to have kind of, you know, maybe it's it's the Facebook link because that's where I bought it or something like that. But whatever else, whatever it is, it's uh, it's gained a whole load of traction. So I, I did a um, an interview with a guy from the Washington Post about this yesterday. So Washington Post, probably the most popular you know, newspaper in the world, I guess, you know, really serious newspaper and all those kind of things. Anyway, they, they asked me about it and they're going to publish an article. So um, I think that's out in the next day or the next couple of days. So I, I'm really looking forward to that. And obviously the other thing I've got to mention is uh, The Observer, which is one of the Sunday papers um, here in the UK, did a kind of little diagram of the week's news story and they graded it important, unimportant or uh, surprising and not surprising. And my story about the shipwreck uh, was up there against um, uh, Pope Francis, very sadly dying. Obviously, that was, I think, not surprising, but important. Um, there was something to do with Elon Musk, which was um, important and surprising. Um, and then in the bottom right hand corner, I was uh, unimportant and surprising. So I was kind of like, yeah, no, that's uh, that's really nice to be mentioned in the same kind of breath as those new or in the same you know, paper as those kind of news stories. So it's a really interesting and um, I guess, you know, maybe that's my 15 minutes of fame. Uh, everyone's entitled to it, I gather. So, so maybe that was it for me. So what I want to talk to you about now is CNS and oxygen toxicity. So I think most divers who have done any sort of nitrox course or extended range course or accelerated decompression course, will have been made aware of how you calculate your CNS loading. And it's a percentage, and we're all given the recommendation, depending on your agency, the maximum limit is either 80% or 100%. And actually, if you're breathing a fairly rich nitrox mix for quite a long time, then it's, it's relatively easy to get close to those CNS limits. So people have looked at the diving that I do, where I'm underwater for, say, two or three hours, I, uh, as you've all seen me do on my videos, I push the PO2, particularly on decompression stops, up to 1.5 bar. So if you spend several hours at 1.5 bar, you are going to go through the CNS recommendations. And people say to me, is that dangerous? You know, how can you do that? That's against the teaching that I've had in this course or that course or whatever. And they're absolutely right. It is absolutely, uh, I go through 80%, I go through 100%. The biggest number, I went through my logs to check and the biggest number I've had uh, was on some of the 100 odd metre dives I've done. So when we did the Transylvania, I came up with 173%. Transylvania is 130 metres. When I did the Memora last year, I also came up with um, 172%. So, you know, those are well, well outside any of the recommendations. Historically, of course, people have done things like air brakes <clears throat> to try and reduce CNS loading. So uh, on some of the really long dives, people would bail off their loop, go onto air for a few minutes, and that would drop the CNS. Then they would go back onto their rebreather and they would continue doing the decompression. I, I don't know anybody who does that these days. Um, it may be done by somewhere, by some people rather. But you know what I've done is I look at the diving that I do and clearly I get some relatively big numbers for CNS. But then if you were to look at some of the really extreme cave divers, you know, somebody like the Wet Mules maybe or Xavier Meniscus, and apologies Xavier if I've, if I've mangled your name there, you know, these guys do 16 plus hours in the water. They are on high percentages of PO2 the whole time. They must come out with CNS loading, I don't know, six, seven, eight hundred percent, I guess, something like that, you know, really, really extreme numbers. And they kind of, they do it okay. You know, th there's no reports of people like that getting getting big uh, ox tox hits. So I guess, why? You know, that's, that's, that's a big question. You know, what is, what is going on? And um, I guess I don't have a really good answer for you. All I can say is that the understanding that I have, and I've kind of heard transmitted at places like Rebreather 4 and 4, is that um, the way of calculating CNS 
doesn't have a whole load of science behind it. There isn't a whole load of rigor. So potentially the thing that we've all been taught is not actually uh, a good a good system. It's not a not a useful system. And if you think about uh, the wet mules, for instance, um, you know, there's several really serious medical people involved in that, including most famously Simon Mitchell. Um, People like him and David Deloitte and those kind of people were at rebreathing for four and four when this thing came up. So I I guess, you know, I think what we probably need to be doing as a as diving organizations is moving away from the use of the various different tools to calculate CNS and just saying, you know, they are probably not particularly helpful. Certainly, you know, myself and the other people I dive with, we completely ignore CNS. The only time we're interested in CNS is normally your shear water or in my case, the AP Inspiration handset will alarm. One of them alarms at 80%, the other one alarms at 100%. Can't remember which way around it is. Uh, they're both suppressible. I cancel them whenever they come on. And I think normally uh, the Inspiration, I think, comes on five or 10 minutes later. So every five or 10 minutes later, every five or 10 minutes, you're having to cancel the CS CNS alarm. So that's about the only <laughs> impact it has on my diving. Now, that isn't to say that oxygen toxicity isn't a really, really serious thing. And it is, obviously, because you do not want to be having convulsions underwater. Um, whole body oxygen toxicity, very nasty if you get it. Therefore, things like uh, oxygen toxicity units, or as they used to be called, um, UPTDs, are, I think, things that you need, to, you need to monitor. I don't know what the wet mules do. I don't know what Xavier does, but I would imagine that those guys must be getting close to the limits uh, for 24 hour exposure on those things. Um, we don't, unless you do a, an extended series of dives, in which case you get, you know, I've been close or sometimes even marginally exceeded the, the 300 uh, OTU 24 hour limit. But the thing that I do pay a lot of attention to is the PO2 when I'm underwater. So, um, <clears throat> This is the actual PO2 of the gas that I'm breathing. So I think if you were to go to the Dan website, for instance, and you were to look at their recommendations, they would say it's generally accepted that 1.3, 1.4 for hours of diving is kind of okay. Um, the, the risk is relatively low. Obviously, with all of these things, you never completely remove the risk. There is always a level of residual risk. And of course, some people are more or less tolerant than other people to these kind of things. So if you are on 1.3 bar and you have somebody who is particularly um, susceptible to oxygen toxicity, then I guess potentially they could, they could have a hit. Um, I've never seen that happen. I'm not aware of anybody who that's happened to. I actually know people who breathe at much higher PO2s. So Xavier, for instance, who I mentioned earlier on, you can see on a report that he did, sorry, on a report on an article that he was interviewed for, he says he does 1.6 during the bottom phase. So um, that for me is too risky. I know people who do 1.5 on the bottom phase. For me, that is also too risky as well. So I think the issue is um, with anything to do with oxygen toxicity, there's different things that increase um, the likelihood of it. And working hard is one of those things that will increase the likelihood of it. So for me, if you're on the bottom, it is possible that you may end up in a situation where you're working hard. If you've got high PO2 and you're working hard, that is going to be a serious risk of an oxygen toxic uh, oxygen hit. The um, the impact of having an oxygen to oxygen hit when you are at the bottom and you are quite deep, I think is more significant than the impact of having an oxygen hit when you are, say, on a decompression stop, on a lazy shot, when you're on a trapeze or something like that, when you're surrounded by other divers. So for me, uh, the way I manage my uh, PO2s, and you'll have seen it in my dives, is I dive 1.3 on the bottom, and then when I come to a level that I think is my first decompression stop, I will increase it to 1.5. If I wasn't on the lazy shot or if something else was going on, I, I might, it was a really strong current, I was having to hold on, you know, I might uh, not do that, I might do something differently, but most of the time I will go up to 1.5 at whatever depth the first decompression stop is. And then I'll do my, all the way through my decompression stops until the uh, rebreather can no longer maintain 1.5 bar, then I will, uh, I will, ch I will change it down. So um, typically, I, my last decompression stop on my shear water will be three meters. 
I won't re normally do the actual deco at three meters. Normally I will do it at four, four and a half. I will have changed my PO2 at that point to about, um, back to 1.3. So the unit can hold it without too many problems. So with 100% oxygen or nearly 100% oxygen in your rebreather, you are gonna get rid of um, your decompression as quickly as possible. So that's my rationale. So as I say, there isn't necessarily any hard science in that. I've given you my thoughts, my recommendations. I'm not a doctor. I am not a decompression scientist. I'm certainly not an oxygen toxicity scientist. So you may disagree with me and that's entirely fine. You may do something different, brilliant. You know, all I would say is make sure you understand the risks of what you're doing. And obviously if you're diving as part of a team, it's important that the other people in your team know what you're doing. So I hope that was interesting. I will be interested in hearing your thoughts on uh, how you manage your oxygen toxicity. It may be that you think CNS is a really, really good thing. Brilliant. You know, please feel free to say something in the comments and, and tell me what you do differently. So that's it in terms of my thoughts on oxygen toxicity. The one thing I'm going to remind you of is, is I've done this loads, I know, but this competition for this torch is ends on um, Wednesday. Ends, ends on Wednesday. So on Wednesday, I'm going to draw out the winner of this torch. I'm going to stick it in the post to them and it could be you. So if you want, if you want a chance to win it, then all you have to do is go and join the Deep Wreck Diving Facebook group and uh, it could be yours. So uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lovely little thing, this Orca Torch. Um, they've sent me a couple, of their, a couple of their products. I've had this one, which is the, uh, the bog standard um, DC, uh, D710. They've sent me the DC710, which you see in the Stop Force video. That's the one that's got through, um, through case charging, which is really nice. I've also just got two of their video lights as well. So I'm going to be testing out their video lights on, on one of the dives as well. So um, brilliant products, love them to bits. And if you're looking for these kind of things, I would encourage you to, to, to consider them. So uh, I guess the one thing I've not told you is what dive I am going to be putting out on Sunday. What's my next video going to be? And the reason for that is I haven't actually decided yet. I've got a couple of ones in the pipeline and I'm trying to decide decide uh, which one which one to put on. Um, there's, I think people like ones where there's a, a bit of, you know, something going wrong. So I do, I do have another one where there's something going wrong. It's um, not quite as bad as a scooter one, but it's another one. It's, it's, it's where I get, I get trapped uh, in a wreck or not really in a wreck, I kind of on the top of it and I get hooked on. And it's, it, 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 it's another one where at the time it seemed to take forever, but it actually went surprisingly quickly. So I may, I may do that one. Um, the, the thing that I want to tell you about, I may do that one as well. It kind of depends where, where I get to. So there's a few different possibilities and I've got a few other ones that I've kind of started doing and, and, and not quite finished. So um, that's something for me to do over the next, uh, the next few days anyway. So I hope you've enjoyed another uh, kind of ramble over a whole load of topics for me. I hope you find it interesting. As always with my stuff, please guys, if you would, if you would like it, if you would leave a comment, if you would share it, um, if you would subscribe, that's brilliant. If you want to turn on your notifications, my daughter says that is the, that is the holy grail of things to do to help a, uh, a YouTuber. So if you wanted to do that as well, that would be brilliant. Otherwise, um, I hope you've enjoyed this and I will see you on the next one.